So Colossal Biosciences has claimed to have cloned a direwolf. And since then, they've announced plans for cloning the MOA, Tasmanian tigers, and before that, they've already claimed to be in the process of cloning mammoths. All this is despite a lot of publicly voiced concerns by scientists and the scientific community, to which they announced, hey, our paper on this is going to be out soon, which means they released it as a preprint. That means it hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, it hasn't fully gone through that process, and also it didn't really address the genome that was used in the cloned wolves. Now, presumably that paper is being worked on by the authors, and should be out in the next few months to potentially over a year, depending on how the review process goes. Rumor, some of these authors are not happy about the state of the paper. Uh, I do not know which authors they are. I have just vaguely heard this, that it is a rumor, and I cannot comment on the validity of it, only that this rumor exists. But now a different paper has come out specifically about how the resurrection of a direwolf by Colossal Biosciences has failed to be a true resurrection. And this came out before Colossal Sciences' own paper passed peer review, which honestly is not necessarily the best look for their commitment to science as a process, that is, publishing the data and then announcing, hey, we found something. You kind of want all of those things to be linked together as opposed to going, hey, we did this, we, we cloned a direwolf, Here's all the data for it a few years later. Regardless though, this paper doesn't provide any new data on anything that Colossal did. Instead, it's just a synthesis of our current understanding of the dire wolf through current molecular genetics, the paleontological context in which it lived, and the anatomy of the dire wolf to also understand how it was different from these other animals. And that leads into the key question here, which is what even is a dire wolf? Is it just a buff gray wolf? Is it a jackal, just a big jackal since Jackals are also very basal on the dog family tree. Or is it just its own unique species, which is totally valid in its own right without needing to be compared to its living relatives? Well, as far as size, they're basically wolves, like modern gray wolves. They're not that big. In fact, when Bergman's rule is considered, they're very similar. Bergman's rule describes the pattern of northern or southern populations of animals being larger than their populations that are closer to the equator. This is mostly due to climate, so there are differences also based on elevation. When we're thinking about that in Western North America, we can think of things like the Tula Elk, which is in the low central valley of California. But then you also have the Rocky Mountain Elk all along the Rocky Mountains, which is a much larger subspecies of elk. You also have Northern and Southern populations of the Red Fox. There's dozens of examples of this Bergman's rule being applied in different parts of the environment. Basic principle for this though is just heat retention. Imagine you have a hot rock and now double its size, which is going to take longer to cool down in the snow, the larger one, because it is heated internally throughout the whole thing, and that means there's more mass holding onto that heat, which can radiate to the edges over a longer amount of time. Heat is basically the movement of atoms. Even if they're not moving across the entire spectrum of the object they are in, they are vibrating in place. And the larger rock has more atoms, which means each atom from the center of that rock loses less movement per degree of cooling, and can then continue to radiate that heat outwards for a longer period of time. Alternatively, if you watch soccer, football like I do, Pele was from the equator, Brazil, 5 foot 8, 172 centimeters. Meanwhile, you have Erling Holland from Norway, who is 6 foot 4, 195 centimeters. And in humans, you will get a lot of variation, right? That, 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 that's not a hard, fast rule, but it is a trend that we do see. And this trend does hold in gray wolves, and gray wolves in their most northern ranges today are larger than the known average size of dire wolves. And there's thousands of specimens from places like the Librea tar pits, so we have a good sample size. Based on different populations though too, it's really hard not to say that they were just wolves as far as their size, again, maybe slightly larger on average, but it was the ice ages, so maybe it's more of a climatic factor causing them to be slightly larger. In fact, what we found is that they were probably right around 60 to 68 kilograms, which is the average size of most gray wolf populations. So again, it's not a super large buff wolf like it is in Game of Thrones, it is just a maybe slightly larger wolf, not super huge, at least as far as its size is concerned. Additionally, wolf is a misnomer. This is an understanding that very basic dogs like a poodle or a shih tzu are more closely related to gray wolves than a dire wolf is to a gray wolf. The wolf part of the dire wolf name is just because it's very similar in some aspects, and also a canid, but it's not very closely related to gray wolves. That said, the preprint that I mentioned earlier does show that there was a prolonged interbreeding and hybridization period between dire and gray wolves. And 
that still needs to be peer reviewed. So is there? It's kind of up in the air right now. We really need to analyze that data much closer. And that takes having people who have good understandings of genetics to look through it. And I'm not a geneticist, so that's not on me. <laughs> This genetic difference, though, does also mean there's no reason to think that a dire wolf would behave almost at all like a gray wolf. Maybe some things, like vocalizing, is pretty common in canids, but there's a difference between wolves howling, coyotes yipping, and foxes yowling. We have no idea what kind of sound the dire wolves would have made, but Colossal Bioscientist has already posted a video of the cloned dire wolves howling like gray wolves. Because they just cloned gray wolves, more or less. Which is super exciting. They're gray wolves, though, not dire wolves. Dire wolves also had enlarged hyoid bones in the throat, which means they potentially had lower toned vocalization than living canids, not exactly perfectly matching gray wolf toned howling. Again, they cloned gray wolves. Now, some of that commentary is mine, not the author's, and to go straight back to the paper for actual anatomical differences, there was also likely a higher bite force due to the space for the temporalis muscle being larger. This is a muscle that essentially attaches the top part of the skull down to the bottom part of the jaw so that you can move that whole jaw and be able to bite things. We even have that muscle. Time will tell if the cloned wolves actually do have that larger temporalis muscle, but we don't know right now because the genetics haven't been fully revealed. Colossal's work to get the genome of the dire wolf recovered approximately 80% of the sequence, which is a massive improvement on earlier attempts. They are genuinely a good genetics lab, and it is really impressive. With that being said, it means they have been fairly deliberately misleading, in my opinion. The genetic differences between the 80% dire wolf genome and the gray wolf genome don't account for things like coat color which is one of the things that Colossal stated was part of their editing process. So they did great editing for what they wanted, which is a superficially Game of Thrones-like direwolf, which may also be super unethical because at least some of the genes linked to white coat color are also linked to deafness. And since Colossal has not shown what genes they edited in these wolves, they may actually be also going deaf, which is really rough to do if you're trying to like put these animals out here for the first time. Oh yeah, we cloned this. This isn't just a natural occurrence. We, we deliberately chose to make these animals deaf is essentially what may have happened. Additionally, they only changed a few genes and those edits amount to about 0.1% of a change from a normal gray wolf genome, which is to say they, again, cloned gray wolves. They may have done better cloning than any other team in history. And as I have said, they are a great genetics lab but they're also run by a company that has spent its entire media effort on basically telling lies or at least stretching the truth as far as they can. Time will tell if they did partially succeed and are just awful at explaining this or if they didn't. And moving into now my commentary, not from these authors, I've been working in the Northern Arizona University Garter Snake Research Lab, where we work with the federally threatened narrow-headed garter snake. We record everything. The temperatures of their housings, the humidity, the water levels. We collect fecal samples, so poop, so that we can do hormone analysis on these snakes. We record how long they were fed for and how many fish they ate. If they are having medical issues, their supplements and medicines are also very carefully recorded. This is in addition to being a biosecure facility, meaning you have separate shoes and fully separate scrubs for each room. It is very carefully controlled. Meanwhile, here's the Game of Thrones author and colossal investor, George R. R. Martin, holding one of the cubs. It brings a lot of concern to me that they're able to just go through this, and maybe he did go through all of that security. But from a husbandry perspective, it's not a great look. They've also stated that these cubs are about 20% larger than normal wolf cubs at about six months. But they've also not said if the genes edited are specifically linked to size, which could influence that and not be the same genes that were different in the dire wolf. And with so many domestic dog breeds of varied size, those genes are understood pretty well. So they could very well just change that. Additionally, going back to what I was talking about with medicines for the snakes, they could have just given these pups growth hormones. And admittedly, I am a cynic. I don't trust large companies, especially biotech companies, probably because I'm diabetic and have personally experienced how companies will abuse people for profits. I don't trust them because of that. And Colossal and the messaging that they've sent out makes me heavily doubt that they wouldn't just give them growth hormones to get a positive result for their investors. They need to be much more transparent in their process. So in short, no, they didn't clone direwolves. It may be a notably larger gray wolf cloned through genuinely revolutionary techniques, 
but it may also be a walking ethics violation. And that's really kind of my biggest concern is what kind of ethics board oversaw this project.